So here is a little tutorial on how to create a panning background in Photoshop and After Effects and integrating the two. So first we're going to start off with um, our walk cycle. This is kind of the most basic application of this. Uh, and so what I've got here in Photoshop is my walk cycle. Um, I have two layers, or two video layers really. So I have my um, layer of pencil drawings that I shot with Dragon and I did a little bit of adjustment. I kind of upped the brightness so I could get a good composite. And this is just a straight pencil layer. You know, I didn't draw this in um, Photoshop, but obviously you could have a layer, an outline layer in Photoshop. And then I have a color layer here. Um, so we can see the green color of this Grinchy guy is uh, on a separate layer. And then I can just play that. And there it is. It's a full cycle. He's walking along. And so what I want to do is I want to create a background that's going to pan behind him as he walks. Um, so here's the background. Um, pretty simple. This is just one flat piece with a drawing. Um, you know, you can get a lot more complicated and stuff with this, and you can have multiple layers. But for now, we'll just stick with the basics here. So I'm going to save this as a JPEG. And by the way, this is, um, the size of this is, you can see it, it is 5400 by 1080. So the main thing is you want the height to be the same as the final height of your composition. And then however long it's going to be is really going to depend on how long you're going to pan. So if it's a really short shot, like a couple seconds, which is what this is going to be, then, you know, 5,000, if we're working off of a 1920 by 1080, then that gives us, you know, like more than double um, the width of the screen to pan through so we can really get the sense that he's traveling over some distance. Of course, if you want the pan to last like 10 seconds, what you could do is you could actually make a looping background where this side matches up with this side and then you just put them end to end and continuously loop them. Or you make a super, super, super long one that's like 10 million pixels wide and you could pan forever. So, um, so I'm going to show you real quick also just how to export these as separate layers. Um, I have my pencil layer already because I shot it in Dragon Frame and I saved it as a frame sequence, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, what I really want is I just want this color layer as an isolated layer that I can put under the pencil line in After Effects. So I'm going to turn off my pencil line and notice that the white disappears, and now we have transparency with this, um, just this green color. So if I export this as a frame sequence, um, we'll go down to render video. And we're going to do a PNG. So you want to make sure you have, you don't want to use media encoder because you don't want to make a video, you just want to make an image sequence. Um, PNG, uh, choose, choose the folder that you want. Okay, and then the important part is this alpha channel bit over here. And um, you just want to make sure that you have an alpha channel that, it, like if it's usually it defaults to none, that means that you're just going to get a white background and you won't be able to um, see your actual background behind it. So you want to have um, depending on like what your color is, you could do pre-multiplied with white or black, or it really doesn't matter because After Effects can interpret that um, however it is. So we'll just do that uh, and make sure that we're rendering all the frames um, and our document size is good. And so here we go. Okay, so now we have all of the assets that we need. Um, so you can see in my folder here, I've got my pencil lines on one layer. Um, I have my color on another layer, and then I have this long background. So let's go over to After Effects, and we will make a new composition. And this will be 1920 by 1080. And let's make our frame rate 24 frames per second. 
and the duration is going to be a pretty short scene, so we probably won't need more than five seconds or so. Okay. So we're going to import. That's Command or Control I, by the way, if you want the shortcut. And uh, we're going to import all of that footage. Here we go. Um, so we'll start with the pencil layer and make sure that it's importing it as a JPEG sequence. And then we will import the color. And then we will import the background. Okay. So first let's get our walking guy down here. Um, so I'm going to pull him into the composition. Uh, notice that he's really big. That's because he's 3,000 pixels wide. I also want to just make sure, oh, see, he's been interpreted at 30 frames per second. We don't want that. Uh, so undo that, and then let's go and interpret that footage at the rate that it should be, which is 12. That's what I animated on. And we can loop this. Um, let's loop it 10 times. And then we have to do the same thing to the pencil lines. Interpret footage, 12 frames per second, loop it 10 times. Okay. Now when we put it in, we can put one, we can put two, and oops, get in there. Pencil lines on top, set this to multiply so we can see it. And, um, and then we need to scale these, and actually I'm going to parent the top layer to the bottom layer, and then I only have to scale the bottom layer. That's what this little thing is, it's a parenting thing. So basically anything I do to this layer is also going to happen to this layer. So if I you know, move it around or something like that, then I don't get misaligned. Um, all right, so percent is probably good. All right, so let's get our background in here. Aha, there we go. Um, notice that because of the that it's not perfectly white, you can actually see the edge of the paper here. Um, I can make an adjustment to the brightness and the contrast um, in the effects panel. Color correction. Let's see if this does the trick. Do it up here. Up the brightness a little bit. So we lose a little bit of the uh, pencil line there, but it's not too bad. And then what I, I do need to get rid of the edge here, so I'm just going to make a very quick mask using the pen tool. Since my guy just stays right here in the center, I can just kind of like put a mask around him, and then all this other stuff goes away. And if you turn off the edge of the mask, you can still see it a little bit. So I'm going to just feather the edge, which you can do under the mask effects here. And I'll put that to like 25. Eh, not enough. Maybe 75. There. Eh, good enough, right? Um, so we've got this guy in, and he is walking. So now, how do we get this background to pan behind him? That is the question. Well, if you select the background layer here um, and zoom out, you can see, all right, so here's my super long background, right? Well, I want to um, start, I'm going to go back and do the move, the selection tool here, get off of the mask tool. Um, you can just use the uh, arrow keys or just slide it over. Um, anyway, so I'm going to put this, position this at the edge, make sure that, you know, when I zoom in, I'm not kind of like misaligned here. Um, and then at the very beginning of my sequence, I'm going to set a position keyframe. 
So if we go down to the transform, I can see position here, and you click this little stopwatch and it makes a keyframe. See that little blue arrow? Now, um, if I move the time bar to the end of my sequence here, and then I move the position of this thing over, all the way to the end. Just do it this way. Grab it and move it over. See that it automatically set a keyframe over here. Now, uh, the computer is going to interpolate the position in between, and so it's really going to um, move it as at just an even rate, which for the scene is fine. So let's render that. Now you can notice that because I animated on twelve on uh, twos at twelve frames per second with the walk cycle, you can see that there's a little bit of a sliding when it goes slowly. But when it's playing, because this is a pretty fast walk, when it's playing at real time, um, you really don't notice the sliding foot. Uh, if you were doing a pretty slow walk or a slow pan then you would probably need to animate your walk on ones. Uh, you can get by with it if it's a faster walk or a faster pan. Uh, but you really need to watch out for that because that will totally, that whole like foot connection to the ground thing, I've harped on a lot of you guys about that. Um, that really is what, you know, makes your character feel like it has weight and gravity. So don't, you know, ignore that by just setting these keyframes and letting them go. Make sure you watch it and make sure that that foot looks like it's really hitting the ground and kind of moving along as the background pants. But that is it. That's pretty much it. Um, and you can definitely ask me some questions in class if uh, you need help with this.